the commencement ceremony for the UCLA College of Letters and Science will begin in just a few moments. We want to allow as many of our graduates and their guests to arrive given the traffic closures on the west side. Thank you for your patience.
Good evening. Welcome to UCLA and our celebration of the College of Letters and Science Class of 2022. <laughs> Graduates, family, and friends, we present the official party. Will the official party please be seated? Thank you. It is my honor to welcome you to UCLA's commencement weekend. My name is Tyrone Howard, professor in the School of Education and Information Studies, also the Pritzker Family Endowed Chair in Education. It is my distinct pleasure to serve as the college marshal for this ceremony. Before we begin, the College of Letters and Sciences at UCLA acknowledges our presence on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Gabrielino Tongva peoples. This ceremony is our first college commencement in person after two long years. Give yourselves a round of applause. Two long years. If nothing else, what that tells us is that you have shown some amazing resilience, some uncanny focus, sheer determination, and you have been destined to be here this moment. Let's give our graduates another big round of applause. You deserve it because you've worked for it. You deserve it because you've earned it. You deserve it because all these things that occurred tried to somehow take you off your pathway, but your sheer perseverance has paid off. So please remember, today the world is a different place than when we were able to gather for our last graduating class. We bring, this, we bring to this event our experiences of a global pandemic, our commitment to address racial injustice at UCLA, and our hope for the years ahead to be filled with the many accomplishments and contributions of our graduates. You are amazing. You are phenomenal. You are sheerly beautiful in ways that you cannot even begin to imagine. Where are my first generation graduates out there? Where are my transfer students out there? And where are my students who folks thought you wouldn't be here, but now you're here? Everybody should raise on there. There you go, right? So before we get started, I have to say this. Uh, you are amazing, you are phenomenal in so many ways. But as you know, you don't do this alone. You do this because there are individuals 
who sacrificed tremendously for you to be here today. So if you don't mind, would you give a big round of applause to all these folks who are here and tell them how much you appreciate them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, parents, caregivers, aunts, uncles, mothers, grandfathers, all of you who hoped and wished and prayed for this day to be here. This amazing group of graduates is here because of your commitment to their education. So we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. To everyone in attendance today, I want to offer my congratulations. I know how proud you are as the family members and friends of our graduates. You have enriched their lives with your love, your support, your money. Uh, say that again, right? And throughout their studies, whether their classes were held on campus here in Westwood or in each of your homes, courtesy of the internet. This class is unique in so many ways. They had to learn virtually. They had to connect via Zoom. They took classes on their phones. They had to deal with dying internets. But their sheer determination got them through it, and they are to be commended for their determination. I am so proud of you. We are so proud of you. You have shown us that the best is yet to come. Show them some love, folks. Show them some love. Together, our entire community at UCLA shares your pride, and we thank you for your sheer determinations. We thank you for your sheer brilliance. We thank you for your focus on not allowing the challenges of our world to deter you from your goals. So let us get started. Singing the national anthem this afternoon are Crystal Mao, Pearl Vineman, Kevin Corrigan, and Ian Shipper from the Herb Albert School of Music. Please welcome Crystal, Pearl, Kevin, and Ian. And please rise for the national anthem. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal, Pearl, Kevin, and Ian. Let's show them another round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. You may be seated now. Uh, and at this point in time, uh, I am pleased to introduce the Senior Dean of the College and Dean of Humanities, David Scarborough. Welcome, David. Hello, UCLA graduates. On behalf of the deans, the faculty, and the honored guests who join me on this stage, I welcome you and your families to the commencement ceremony for the College of Letters and Science. I'd also like to thank Professor Tyrone Howard, our college marshal, for greeting our guests this evening. Graduates, this is a day to acknowledge your achievements and to celebrate the culmination of your undergraduate studies. 
You've met the highest challenges of education. You've been partners with faculty in our quest to learn and to discover. And you'll be the next generation of leaders in the fields that you pursue. Class of 2022, your academic journey has led you here to this historic moment in time, a moment which will never come again. Together, we look forward to a bright future. Graduates, joining us here today are many special people who stood by you through your years at UCLA, your family and your friends. I'd like to ask the parents, the partners, the friends and the family members of our graduates to stand. And graduates, please join me in once again acknowledging your guests. Thank you, thank you. Now I'm pleased to welcome the Chancellor of UCLA. In his 14 years as Chief Executive of the campus, he has worked to strengthen the university's academic excellence, to build our campus diversity, and to inspire a new level of civic engagement within the UCLA family. Please welcome the Chancellor of UCLA, Jean Block. Graduates, families, friends, guests, regents of the University of California, and our distinguished speaker, welcome to UCLA, the nation's number one public university. As UCLA's chancellor, it's my great honor to join you in this celebration. I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. For today, we pay tribute to the incredible, the inimitable, the unshakable UCLA class of 2022. Congratulations. <laughs> so graduates, this is your day. It's a day to reflect on your monumental achievement, especially in light of what you've faced and what you've overcome. It's also a day to look ahead to the many ways in which you will surely shape the future. But while you are the stars of this show, this is your show tonight, uh, there are many others, as was mentioned, that helped you get here today. And again, there's never enough applause for all the people that have helped you. So let's just give one more, one more round of applause to guardians, grandparents, parents, great-grandparents, brothers, sisters, children, mentors, friends, and everyone who's really loved you and helped you uh, with your support to bring you where you are today. So after two years of virtual and hybrid commencement events, which were okay, but not this, it's a joy to be back in Pauley Pavilion for today's ceremony. A tradition like this bonds you to generations of UCLA students who've come before you. And today's ceremony is a ritual, you know, not unlike other rituals, like taking friends to late, into, uh, taking, talking to friends late in the night on the hill, doing an eight clap alongside cheering fans at Bruin games, or stopping by the sculpture garden on a warm evening. Those are also rituals, but this one's a very special ritual. Uh, commencement's a point of connection you share with UCLA graduates of years past, and one you'll share with future generations as well. This is a, an activity that I hope you'll remember, but will really connect you with UCLA forever. Though you have much in common with Bruins of other eras, and I've seen now 14 graduating classes, uh, Every graduating class's experience here at UCLA is unique. It's colored by what took place on campus and the broader world while you were a student here. And what you experienced here in your college years was truly distinctive. As you know, during your time at UCLA, you saw the world in the grip of a crisis as the COVID pandemic took hold, bringing with it pain and fear and upheaval. Many of you felt the whiplash of moving back in with your parents, which is not bad, but a change turning kitchen tables into classrooms, taking up new roles as caregivers, grappling with the feelings of isolation, and adapting to other transformations in your lives. Really profound changes that no other class since I've been here certainly has faced. These past years were singular in other ways as well. 
You experienced and likely voted in one of the most polarizing presidential elections this nation has ever seen. You saw a shocking and brazen siege of the U.S. Capitol building during the first week in 2021, and you felt the effects of climate disasters like wildfires and excessive heat here in California, severe flooding in Europe and South Asia, and brush fires in Australia. You experienced the troubling invasion of the Ukraine this spring, and far too many times you witnessed the deep pain of racial injustices and horrific mass shootings throughout this country. These experiences have challenged you, and they've shaped you. They've helped you to develop a tremendous ability to adapt to tectonic shifts in your life. They gave you a greater respect for science and truth, and a stronger recognition of the dangers of misinformation. They reinforced the need to fight on this planet for this planet's future, and even as they stirred up anguish, they etched on you compassion and empathy, as well as a commitment to seeking justice and contributing to the greater good. Members of the class of 2022, today's world may look like a harrowing one, but crises are moments of immense possibility when the traditional order can be shifted and new thinking applied to old problems. Shaped by your experiences and your sense of what is right and good, and with your UCLA degree soon in tow, you are incredibly well positioned to enact this change. You will be the ones to sculpt a more beautiful and a more just future for the planet. As you prepare to leave UCLA, I hope you'll take with you the ties that bind you to this institution and its community. You are the newest members of the UCLA Alumni Association, and through that network, you will find like-minded peers, free classes to continue your education, and all kinds of resources to help you throughout your lives. So stay connected to UCLA. You're part of our going to be 500,000 alumni, uh, 500, alumni that we hope will stay connected to this place forever. I also encourage you to reflect on the powerful forces that have shaped you in the past few years. Consider what they mean for who you have become and for where you will go from here. So graduates, let me once again offer you my deepest gratitude and your, my best wishes. I hope the education you've received here will serve you well and that you will use it not just to benefit yourselves, but to benefit all of society. Society really needs your skills, your attention. You can make a difference. So congratulations to the UCLA class of 2022. I wish you much success, the best of luck. And with that, I offer you one last Go Bruins. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Block. My name is Adriana Galvan, Dean of Undergraduate Education. My fellow deans and I are honored to acknowledge the students who graduate today with very special academic achievements. I would like to recognize the students who are graduating with one of the highest academic awards the College of Letters and Science can give to an undergraduate, the designa designation of college honors. The extraordinary students who are graduating with college honors have completed outstanding work in their major and also a special set of rigorous courses. Of the thousands of students who are graduating from UCLA this year, over 550 are receiving college honors. Will the students who are graduating with college honors please stand? Thank you, please be seated. Dean Johnson will recognize your service in the community. My name is Tracy Johnson, Dean of Life Sciences, and I am pleased to recognize our many students who are involved in projects in the community. They accomplish this work through campus programs that bring together civic involvement and academic courses. Would all of the graduating seniors who served in the community please stand? Thank you. Please be seated. 
Dean Hunt will recognize the Chancellor's Service Award recipients. Graduates, I am Darnell Hunt, Dean of Social Sciences. I am privileged to acknowledge the recipients of the 2022 Chancellor's Service Award. The Chancellor's Service Award is presented to students whose college careers have been distinguished by dedication to UCLA and the community. These students, 166 of them this year, have earned this distinction through sustained record of outstanding leadership and service. Will all the students who have been honored as recipients of the Chancellor's Service Award please stand so we can recognize your superb commitment. Thank you, please be seated. Dean Skaberg will recognize those who have earned Latin honors. Hello graduates. I'd like to present our students who are receiving Latin honors, which is recognition for high academic achievement. There are three levels of Latin honors. First, I'd like to acknowledge our students who've received cum laude honors. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you, please be seated. Next, I'd like to honor our students who are graduating magna cum laude. Please stand and be recognized for your achievements. Thank you, please be seated. Finally, let's honor the students who are graduating with the highest Latin honors, summa cum laude. Please stand. Thank you, please be seated. Dean Garcia Garibay will recognize your effort in research. Hello graduates, I am Miguel Garcia Garibay, Dean of Physical Sciences. And I would like to recognize students who have participated in research while at UCLA. As you know, UCLA is one of the world's great research universities. More than half of our students enhance their academic careers by working alongside faculty on projects, writing on our thesis, or participating in research classes. These students perform original work and advance the frontiers of knowledge. With, the, with all of the graduating seniors who participated in research, please stand so we can recognize their achievements. Congratulations, please be seated. Thank you, Dean Garcia Garibay. Graduates, you have excelled in everything you've put your mind to, from research to community service, from academic su success to personal enrichment. You've spent your years at UCLA becoming well-rounded and ready to begin a new chapter. Your student speaker for this evening embodies many of your own successes. Marilyn Martinez is from Glendale, California. As a first-generation transfer student, Marilyn graduates today summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in both Sociology and Chicana and Chicano Studies. Marilyn's work for UCLA's Academic Advancement Program, including serving as a peer counselor and as a research assistant. Her soci Sociology Departmental Honors thesis focuses on garment workers in Los Angeles. Marilyn was awarded the Regent Scholarship, one of the highest honors awarded to a student at the university. Please welcome Marilyn. Hello everyone. I would like to begin by welcoming renowned Chancellor Block, esteemed faculty and staff, honored guests, beloved friends and families, and above all else, the resilient Bruin class of 2022. Yeah. 
I am incredibly honored and privileged to be here today. I am also humbled by the opportunity to address each and every one of you. I want to start by congratulating the class of 2022. In the face of uncertainty, we persevered. For the last two years, as the COVID pandemic grew, incredibly unpredictable, we have heard and used the word tentative countless of times. And yet today, I am certain that the class of 2022 did something that no other graduating class has done before. In 2022, we navigated the technical difficulties of Zoom University. We rapidly adjusted to the virtual form of learning. We were patient, focused, and certain that it was no big deal. We all figured it was at most a two-week change. Then, in 2021, after a whole year on Zoom, we transitioned to a hybrid form of learning. Many of us returned to campus. We found ourselves learning both through computer screens and in classrooms. Now, in 2022, we can say with absolute certainty that we did something no other class has done before. We successfully transitioned back to in-person instruction. While it has not been easy, we can finally take a moment and congratulate ourselves. In fact, I found some humor that like many other transfer students, my first day of senior year was also my first day on campus as a student. It was incredibly peculiar to be lost on campus as an upperclassman, an experience unique to the class of 2022. Despite the fact that half of our time at UCLA was online, we were still able to make the most of our experiences as UCLA Bruins. UCLA and its privileged education have provided many, with, many of us with a myriad of opportunities otherwise unimaginable. It has nurtured and promoted our growth as students, professionals, and leaders. Being a student at the number one public university in the nation is a privilege. However, it is a privilege we have earned through our hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and above all else, our resiliency. As a proud daughter and sister of Mexican immigrants from Puebla and Guerrero, Mexico, I can attest to the growth that UCLA has afforded us. Four years ago, as a high school senior, I did not apply to a single four-year university. It was not because I did not have the grades or because I did not want to pursue higher education. Rather, it was because as a first-generation student, I did not know how to. Today, as an official university graduate of UCLA, I have worked at the admissions office as a Bruin ambassador. My biggest uncertainty turned into my home away from home at UCLA. Four years ago, I only knew a single thing about higher education, and it was that I knew nothing about higher education. Today, I stand before you as a Bruin ambassador for the UCLA admissions office and as an academic advancement peer counselor, fully versed in the college admissions process, academic policies, and academic regulations. I say this not to show off, but instead to attest to the possibilities and subsequent growth made possible by UCLA. Of course, it could not have been done without the love, support, and sacrifice of my various mentors. My mother, Rosalia, my father, Rigoberto, my brother, Giovanni, my sister, Lucero, and my partner, Enrique. To them, I say, todo lo que soy y espero ser, se lo debo a ustedes. Thank you, and once again, congratulations to the Bruin class of 2022. We did it. Thank you, Marilyn, for that powerful story. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker, UCLA alumna, Caitlin Ohashi. 
Caitlin Ohashi took the world by storm with the joyful gymnastics floor routine that earned her a perfect score at the 2019 Collegiate Challenge and racked up 230 million views on YouTube. But Caitlin was a force to be reckoned with long before that, having been a standout gymnast in her early years, having won her first senior elite competition against Simone Biles at age 15. Despite a back injury that doctors said would end her athletic career, Caitlin overcame physical struggles and personal doubts during her place on UCLA's top-ranked gymnastics team in 2015. She attended our university from 2015 to 2019 winning all manner of accolades and becoming an NCAA cha national champion, as well as earning her degree in gender studies. With her gymnastic success as a platform, Caitlin has used her voice, photography, and poetry to comment on societal issues, including body shaming, sexual assault, and cyberbullying. Far more than a talented and influential athlete, she's become widely recognized as an activist, writer, performer, and artist. Caitlin is a living, walking, and cartwheeling champion of the values that we strive to impart to our students, and we're grateful to have such a distinguished young alumna with us today. Please join me in welcoming Caitlin Ohashi. Who would have thought this would have been my final ballot, Polly? How crazy is that we get to stand in front of each other today? I graduated three years ago, which coincidentally was also the last in-person graduation. So let's give ourselves a round of applause for making it through a pandemic and making it to graduation. I wanna thank Chancellor Jean Block, the staff that made this all happen, UCLA Athletics, my family who actually gets to be in the audience today, my friends that are always in my corner because we all know it takes a village. And last but not least, the infamous Valerie Condos Field for taking a chance on me seven years ago. I remember the day I committed to UCLA like it was yesterday, probably because I experienced my highest high and my lowest low in the span of a few hours. I visited Westwood and immediately fell in love with our school. I committed right there and then to Miss Val and my, co my team crying and celebrating as I was overwhelmed by joy. Sometime later when I got back to the dorms and settled in, I called the boy I was dating to share the good news. To my shock and surprise, he brought me down to earth real quick with a flurry of negativity, disguised as a device, letting me know that I shouldn't leave for California so that we could continue developing our high school love story. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> but I called Miss Val upset and confused and I told her that I shouldn't have committed to UCLA and may have made the biggest mistake of my life. Looking back at everything now, perhaps my biggest mistake was telling my future coach that. But I am happy I did because she told me that it was okay to feel the way I did. And it was okay for us to be afraid and uncomfortable because it's in those moments that we truly discover who we are and who we wanna be. Ms. Val told me that UCLA is made for leaders and that I should lead my life in the direction I want to go, taking into account my best interest, not anyone else's. So as I stepped onto campus for the first time and the second time, and as a matter of fact, even today, I could feel that. So I want to congratulate each and every one of you on graduating and being here today because you guys are all a part of that leadership. To say that we graduated from a place that pushes us to our limits and inspires us to be the best version of ourselves is an understatement because we are all the reason why it is that way. The only regrets in life I have are the opportunities I've been too shy to take, whether it's to conform to society and blend in, that feeling of wanting to be liked rather than respected, being afraid of judgment, the thought of failure and not being able to please the people around me, or not having the voice to speak up. I remember calling Ms. Val at 16 years old to ask for a spot on the UCLA gymnastics team, not even knowing if I was gonna be able to do gymnastics again due to my back injury. She was so curious why I wasn't pursuing the Olympics anymore, and then she asked me the last time I was actually happy doing gymnastics. This wasn't a question I ever considered, but I knew exactly when it was. I answered definitively. 11 years old before I ever went elite. I had spent one third of my gymnastics career at that point unhappy in pursuing a career everyone around had presented to me like it was their own. 
I was in an abusive environment where using your voice was far from welcomed and validated and repercussively did. So I learned to be fearful of using my voice. So along with my, along with my voice, my thoughts diminished. I had never even bothered to stop and ask myself what I wanted out of my gymnastics career. So how do you fight for something when you don't even know what you're fighting for? How do you stand up for something when you don't even know where your beliefs fall? There are two definitions for acceptance. The first one that we typically gravitate towards is the action or process of being received as adequate or suitable, typically to be admitted into a group. And the second one is the action of consenting to receive or undertake something offered. The first definition relies on how others perceive us, whereas the second one is us taking ownership over our own worth. It's the fact that we have the power to accept what is handed to us. My freshman year was eye-opening to me in a lot of ways. It was evident that I still needed to heal quite a bit from a sport that never made me feel like I was enough. During a team meeting, we went around the table calling out what our anchor was, that thing that was holding us back. When it got to me, I answered, I don't ever want to be great again. Everything that I had associated greatness with had caused me misery. Gymnastics is a sport that gains recognition every four years during the time of the Olympics. And if you don't walk away with a gold medal around your neck, it seems like it was all for nothing. It's every little gymnast's dream. It used to be mine too, so when that dream quickly vanished before my eyes, I felt like a failure. I've learned in life that most things never go as planned. So while goal setting is good, I've learned that being able to adapt in the direction you want to head is even better. You have, to learn with the punch you have to learn to roll with the punches because life will punch you and knock you down. And sometimes it might even feel like it's winning. When I realized gymnastics wasn't my everything, I was, accept I was able to accept greatness for what it truly is. In 2019, we broke ticket sale records at every school we attended. For the first time in gymnastics history, the Olympics wasn't the only thing on people's radar. And for the first time in my gymnastics history, it no longer mattered that I didn't have a gold medal around my neck because redefining my definition of success and what that looks like was my very own win. So sometimes success is getting out of bed in the morning. Sometimes your 100% is a 40%, but just know that success is like having the last punch in life. So no matter how you look, you can always say, you should have seen the other guy. <laughs> Most missed opportunities don't come from not taking them, but from not seeking them. Actually, during my time at UCLA, I worked with a, on a project with Bruin Shelter, a student-run organization for other students that are experiencing housing insecurity. When they first started and began looking for shelter, they knocked on 100 church doors and heard 100 no's. It wasn't until their 101st door that they knocked on when they finally received their yes. So most of the time, life doesn't come knocking on your door. But, and if, even if you don't hear a yes the first time, that doesn't mean there won't be one. So, now is your time to live life fully and try all the things you want. Life is all about the pursuit rather than the destination. And your life started yesterday, not here today at graduation. So live life fully and unapologetically. I wanna share a poem I wrote with you called, Never Give Up. Ah, maybe when I'm a teenager, I'll finally be grown. I'll make it known to everyone around, I am no longer a kid. Maybe then I won't get looked down upon. The older kids won't think I'm lame, and as for myself, I'll understand the game. We really aren't that different. We're all one and the same. And when I turned 13, I knew they didn't feel the same. I wanted to be seen, so I kept chasing this dream, and the further I got, the quicker it seemed. I was now 16 and driving a car, but was only allowed to take it so far, yet I still got in my first accident. And that wouldn't be my last. You'd think I would have learned something, but Sometimes I find myself driving so fast, I'm always in a rush from one thing to the next, thinking if I achieve that one thing, I'll finally feel whole. But every time I reach that goal, I still find it never truly feeds my soul. So I ask myself, how will I know when I'm grown? Will it be the chance to finally live my life as my own? Will it be a grown man's clone imprinted on the nape of my neck? Will it be when I finally receive my very first check? Will it look like this certificate printed on this very piece of paper, like you have finally made it into the real world where fairy tales seem few and far between? I still remember being that little girl that used to always chase her dreams. I look around now, confused and scared as hell. My life's in my hands, and what if it doesn't go well? Mac Miller said, 
You can have the world in the palm of your hand, you still might drop it. And I reflect on my collegiate career and what if I can't top it? What if I don't know how to transition into the next topic and everything else feels like chasing fleeting moments and I can't stop it? Like romanticizing that feeling of being an adult. As a kid, I once asked my mom, why is it taking so long? And looking at it now, I'm exactly where I belong. I may have sped at different parts along the way, totaled my car going the wrong way, but now at red lights, I've learned to stop, taking it all in. Because even though they seem insignificant and sometimes a pain in the ass, they're all parts in our journey that force us to pause and appreciate the little things that get us to where we're going. So when my GPS glitches and I feel like I've lost my way, I look around and I know that everything's gonna be okay. So be patient with yourself as you go, for there are long drives ahead and untouched land to explore, where sometimes unanswered questions turn into even more. But just remember, it's not so much the destination, but the never-ending journey that we learn to adore. Never stop growing up. The last thing I wanna leave you all with is my mom's life motto. Make one thing more beautiful every day. I think it's as simple as stopping and having a conversation with someone or saying hi. It takes 30 seconds to impact someone's life. So no matter how easy it can become to judge someone's actions, just remember there's always more than one side or even two sides to every matter. So be patient with people as you go, including yourself. And congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you, Caitlin. Now, it is my honor to present the candidates for the conferral of their degrees. I will call on the deans of the college to present the bachelor's candidates to Chancellor Block. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the Division of Physical Sciences is Dean Miguel Garcia Garibay. Thank you, Adriana. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelors of Science and Bachelors of Arts in the Division of Physical Sciences please raise and remain standing? You have learned about the great challenges of our time, deep questions about the nature of our universe, about our origins, and above all, about our future in the world in which we live. For instance, climate change lies in the domain of our students in atmospheric and oceanic sciences, earth, planetary, and space sciences, and the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability. The discovery of compounds that cure diseases and that lead to the sustainable generation of energy will be the world of our graduates in chemistry and biochemistry. The investigation into the structure and deep history of our universe, as well as the possibility of other life in the cosmos will be pioneered by our physics and astronomy graduates. Our graduates in mathematics and statistics will pioneer the, mas the mastery of the flood of data that we must now process in order to understand and manage an ever, ever more complex world. All of this and more will be addressed by you, our graduates in the Division of Physical Sciences. Now I have a challenge here for you. You're not too many, but you're very loud, right? <laughs> All right, so when I read your department, you need to scream in a proportion of how hard it was to get your degree. <laughs> if it was really easy, say nothing. <laughs> Look at it, it was pretty hard then Ugh, scream loud, okay? <laughs> How about atmospheric and oceanic science? <laughs> that was easy. How about earth, planetary, and space sciences? <laughs> Excellent. Statistics. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> Environmental science. How about physics and astronomy? <laughs> Mathematics? How about chemistry and biochemistry? <laughs> Excellent.
excellent. Physical sciences graduates, you all live here with a deep fund of knowledge in the science underlying what we know about our world. You also carry with you finely honed skills in reasoning and analysis that will equip you to overcome the most daunting intellectual challenges that will come your way. You are the cream of the crop. You have mastered the hard sciences. Chancellor Block, it is my honor to present to you the dedicated, inquisitive, analytical, gifted, good-looking, <laughs> and altogether stellar candidates of the degrees of the Bachelors of Science and Bachelors of Arts from the Division of Physical Sciences. Thank you, Miguel. <laughs> candidates, please be seated. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degree in the Division of Humanities is Dean David Skaberg. Thank you, Adriana. Uh, will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in the Division of Humanities please rise and remain standing? Good. Uh, I trust that you know how to make some noise on behalf of yourselves and each other, so let's go. When I think of you graduates, I reflect that the greatest public research university in the land educates experts and seekers of knowledge of many kinds, and that among these, since UCLA's founding just over a century ago, there have always been the experts in humankind, the young people who felt called to study the human legacy itself, the thought and languages and literatures and arts that define our personal and our social lives and our long cultural histories. Indeed, since their earliest beginnings over a millennium ago, universities have made a place for fundamental consideration of human value, human meaning, and human improvement. And from this seed, the university grew and continues to grow, even as we human beings have faced ever-renewed challenges and opportunities. Humanities graduates, what have you learned? And what will you take with you from UCLA to teach others? Well, you are graduates in philosophy and exacting caretakers of the truth. Cheer for the philosophers, please. You are linguists, scholars of language itself as a human faculty and medium of communication. Linguists. You're art historians, keen observers of the image and of its uses. You're, scholar <laughs> you're scholars of religion and of how humans' deepest beliefs about the world shape their lives. You're learners of difficult languages and sharp and independent readers of the literatures of the world, literatures in English, in Asian languages and cultures, Near Eastern languages and cultures, comparative literature, classics, Spanish and Portuguese, Slavic, East European, and Eurasian languages and literatures, and European languages and transcultural studies. And many of you have, here have also completed minors in digital humanities, in the study of religion, and in LGBTQ studies. Congratulations. I hope that you've completed the coursework for your degrees with real joy in learning and with a real drive to understand all that is human. But I know you're also aware of the very practical, very considerable powers you've acquired. You are highly trained writers and speakers. You are readers and translators and interpreters of complex human situations, including situations of conflict. You are living encyclopedias of culture and spokespeople for the commitments held most dear by human beings. And you are critics, 
creators, free thinkers, fighters for justice, and continually self-correcting learners. These are the powers that any workplace needs. And they're also very clearly the powers that our world will need. Chancellor Block, I present to you the eloquent, cultured, thoughtful, resourceful, passionately humane candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts from the Division of Humanities. Thank you, David. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the Division of Life Sciences is Dean Tracy Johnson. Thank you, Adriana. Will the candidates for the Bachelor's of Science, Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Life Sciences please rise and remain standing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would like to start by congratulating you all for all you've accomplished at a truly extraordinary time. I'm sure that when you started this journey, you did not expect a graduation quite like this or indeed a year like this. And while this time has brought some challenges to all of us, it is also important to take stock of what the disciplines within the life sciences, which you have all explored and embraced, have accomplished in this extraordinary time. Accomplishments like research in psychology that has helped us understand and, yes, ameliorate the psychological stresses of our time, advances in computational and systems biology that have allowed us to see the sequence of a virus to single nucleotide resolution to understand its biology. And because of fundamental insights in immunology and molecular biology, we were poised to develop and distribute in record time life-saving treatments and protective vaccines. Yes, in this last few years, disciplines in the life sciences have quite literally been at the center of addressing the most fundamental global challenges of a generation. But frankly, this isn't new. Life sciences disciplines have long been at the forefront of addressing the most fundamental and existential questions of the time. Questions like, what is the impact of human activity on the planet? And what do we need to do to mitigate negative effects? How do we prevent and cure life-threatening diseases? What is consciousness? How do we think? How do we live? How do we learn? How do we love? And how does that three pound organ inside our skulls affect all of this? At UCLA, in the life sciences, we address these exciting biological questions and we offer it, offer a dozen majors in the life sciences to do so. And so now life sciences, it's time to make some noise. <laughs> These disciplines include computational and systems biology, ecology, behavior, and evolution, marine biology, human biology and society, cognitive science, microbiology, immunology, and molecular genetics molecular, cell, and developmental biology, physiology, neuroscience, psychobiology, biology, and psychology. As UCLA has just recently marked its first 100 years, you, our graduating Bruins, will lead us into the next 100 years as our future leaders, doctors, teachers, 
research scientists, therapists, entrepreneurs, and global citizens. So Chancellor Block, it is now my honor to present to you the psychologically resilient, neurologically well-connected, ecologically sensitive, evolutionarily complex, immunologically resistant, molecularly sophisticated, physiologically well-integrated, computationally advanced, and absolutely amazing candidates for the degrees of Bachelors of Science and Bachelor of Arts from the Division of Life Sciences. Thank you, Tracy. Candidates, please be seated. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the Division of Social Sciences is Dean Darnell Hunt. Thank you, Adriana. Well, it looks like they saved the best for last. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Social Sciences please rise and remain standing? <laughs> Graduates, you have earned this moment through the hard work, long hours, and perseverance you have shown. Each of you should be incredibly proud of what you've accomplished. Our motto in the social sciences is engaging LA, changing the world. And you are now positioned and expected to take what you have learned and make your mark on the world. As social scientists, you will have the opportunity to have a seat at the table to help achieve the positive changes you want to see in the world. As social scientists, you will address economic, political, and so uh, social conditions in order to create a more, uh, more equity and opportunity in our public and private institutions. As social scientists, you will examine the roots of social and cultural conflicts to move us towards a more just and humane society. As social scientists, you will communicate across cultures and communities, forging enduring partnerships with people from dif uh, different from yourselves, whether from different neighborhoods, different cities, different states, or different nations. As social scientists from UCLA, you have learned from faculty and departments that are among the best in the world, and you will be active agents for change in the construction of a better society. All of you in the social sciences, including those in geography, all right, aerospace, military science, and naval science, American Indian studies, communication, labor studies, anthropology, Asian American studies, gender studies, Chicana, Chicano, and Central American studies. History. Sociology. African American studies. Political science. And last but not least, economics. <laughs> you have learned to look at the world through a new lens of understanding. You have the research skills, the cultural insight, and community-oriented perspective to change the world. Today, we celebrate your achievements and the promise of a future that benefits from your leadership. You have reached this moment not despite the challenges you have faced, but because you faced those challenges with dedication, thoughtfulness, and hard work. Chancellor Block, I am honored to present to you the most socially engaged, research savvy, service oriented, culturally creative, interactionally skillful, intersubjectively attuned, around the clock inspiring and inspired, multilingual, multicultural, multi everything you could ever think of plus more. <laughs> the candidates. 
for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts from the great, unique, awesome, breathtaking, tremendous, splendid, impressive, and superb UCLA Division of Social Sciences. <laughs> Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you, Darnell. The candidates for the bachelor's degrees have now been presented. I call on Chancellor Block to confer the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts on the class of 2022. Will all the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts please stand and remain standing. I must say, your deans have made a very compelling case for you, <laughs> arguing in all manner how deserving you are of a degree. So uh, first, my congratulations that you have convinced your deans you're highly worthy, most impressive. So candidates for the bachelor's degree, your presence here today demonstrates the rich reward of intelligence, which clearly is the claim, and perseverance, <laughs> which is clearly the claim. The UCLA community takes great pride in celebrating the achievements of the class of 2022. And more than anything, I hope that your experience at UCLA has opened some windows on the world and leaves you yearning to know more. I mean, you rec hopefully received an education here, but there's so much more to learn, and I hope we've opened your minds for more learning. Now, this is the critical part. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the regents of the University of California, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Okay, so I heard a rumor that the 7 p.m. ceremony is always the rowdiest, and I'm glad you guys proved them right. <laughs> Graduates, let me congratulate all of us on becoming the newest alumni of UCLA as the class of 2022. Now, we have one final tradition to observe. Before we received our degrees, we wore our tassels on the right side of our mortar boards. Now that our degrees have been conferred, it is time to move the tassel to the left and join the select company of UCLA graduates. Bachelors, please turn your tassels to the left. Congratulations. To close commencement, please join in the singing of the alma mater, Hail to the Hills of Westwood, performed by Crystal Mao, Pearl Weinman, Kevin Corrigan, and Ian Shipper. Hail to the hills of Westwood, to the mighty sea. Conquer every fall. 
Thank you, Crystal, Pearl, Kevin, and Ian. And to all of you, thank you for very much for joining us today. Best wishes to the class of 2022. Congratulations and go Bruins. Thank you. 